Hello friends, welcome to GT Science Tutorial. In this video, I am going to explain about cyclic process and Carnot cycle. Imagine having an engine whose efficiency was 100%. Suppose if you have a bike right now which gives 30 kilometers of mileage right now, that would give more than 70 kilometers of mileage. Wouldn't that be amazing? In past, some engineers thought of that concept, but they could not make such engine. What is the reason for that? In this video, we are going to understand everything about that. So, let's start. First of all, we need to understand about the cyclic process. Cyclic process is a kind of process in which the system is brought back to its initial state after a series of change. The graph of cyclic process looks like this. It will start from point A, then it there will be a series of change and it will end on point A again. This type of process is called cyclic process. This type of figure is familiar. Okay, In mathematics, you might have heard about the term perimeter in which we start from a point, we end on the same point. It is just like that. In cyclic process, uh, the reaction or the process starts from point A and it will end on the same point A. Let's write the definition. Cyclic process is a kind of process in which the system is brought back to its initial state after a series of changes. So after a series of changes, the system will be brought back to its original state or initial state in case of cyclic process. So see, suppose at point A, the enthalpy is H and internal energy is E. And we know that enthalpy and internal energy are state function. since enthalpy and internal energy are state functions state function means they only depend on the initial state and the final state they do not depend on the path so uh, at point a the enthalpy is h and internal energy is e and after a series of change it will return to the same state again in final state as well it will have enthalpy h and internal energy e so, the net change in internal energy and enthalpy will be how much? Yes, you are thinking correct. That is 0. Because it is a, sorry, they are state functions. Now, according to first law of thermodynamics, according to first law of thermodynamics, so first law of thermodynamics says Q is equal to dE plus W. Right, Q means total heat energy supplied to the system, D means change in internal energy, W means work done. So as you can see over here, DE means 0, so therefore it will be Q is equal to W. So for cyclic process, all the heat energy supplied is utilized to do the work. This is the case for maximum convertibility of heat energy into work or this is the ideal case to make the that car note heat engine whose efficiency would be 100%. Now let's understand what Carnot cycle actually is. Carnot cycle is a hypothetical, ideal and reversible cyclic process proposed by a French engineer Sadi Carnot in 1824 for the maximum convertibility of heat into work. He tried to verify the concept of cyclic process that is whatever heat energy we provide to the system that could be converted to the work or simply you can say that whose efficiency would be 100%. So for maximum convertibility 
ऑफ हीट इनटू वर्क फॉर दैट ही कंसीडर्ड ऑल द स्टेप्स टू बी रिवर्सिबल ऑल द स्टेप्स आर रिवर्सिबल बिकॉज रिवर्सिबल वर्क इज रिवर्सिबल वर्क इज मैक्सिमम वी हैव ऑलरेडी कंपेयर दिस इन माई प्रीवियस वीडियोज एज वेल द रिवर्सिबल वर्क इज ऑलवेज मैक्सिमम सो ही कंसिडर्ड ऑल द स्टेप्स इन द कार्बोट साइकिल टू बी रिवर्सिबल सो दैट द वर्क वुड बी मैक्सिमम एंड मैक्सिमम हीट एनर्जी कुड बी कन्वर्टेड इन टू द वर्क सो दैट इट वुड बी इजी टू मेक दैट कार्नोट हीट इंजिन फॉर दैट ही कंसिडर्ड अ सिलिंडर विथ आइडियल पिस्टन दिस इज आइडियल पिस्टन आइडियल पिस्टन मीन्स वेटलेस एंड फ्रिक्शनलेस पिस्टन ओके एंड इन दैट सिलिंडर ही केप आइडियल गैस he considered ideal gas to be present there actually one mole of ideal gas ideal gas this was the system that he considered and he considered he considered two reservoirs reservoirs one source that could provide heat to the system another sink that could absorb the excess amount of heat excess heat or heat produced by the system similarly he considered a thermally thermally insulated cylinder as well for adiabatic process so what he considered was he, he in total he considered four steps in carnot cycle to where isothermal process and to where adiabatic process for isothermal process the system needs heat energy that heat energy would be provided by source and sometimes if the system produces heat energy then that, that would be absorbed absorbed by the sink and for adiabatic process he considered the thermally insulated cylinder that is if the system was kept in thermally insulated cylinder then there would not be any exchange of heat energy between them now let's understand all the four steps one by one the first operation is isothermal reversible expansion that is in first operation the gas was expanded isothermally and we get a graph like this let me draw the pv diagram over here that is also called indicator diagram in y axis pressure x axis volume so let us consider this a to be the initial state of the uh, system from it it expanded isothermally this is isothermal expansion and it reached to the uh, state b at a the pressure was p1 volume v1 and temperature p2 because it was at higher temperature now as this is isothermal process then change in internal energy will be how much zero and the change in temperature will be zero because in isothermal process the temperature should not change and its condition will be the pressure will be p2 volume will be v2 and temperature will be t2 itself because the temperature will not change if we drop this at the volume line x axis then this let us consider to be a prime and this is b prime okay so this is the curve that we obtain in isothermal expansion for this process what he actually did was the system was kept in contact with the sink because the gas has to expand and to expand it needs heat energy without changing the temperature so it needs heat energy from the outside because in isothermal process it can exchange heat energy with the surrounding as well so the sink would provide it heat energy to expand the gas let's write that the system is kept in contact with the source source from which 
from which it gets q2 amount of heat amount of heat we are considering q2 to be the heat energy over here because the temperature is t2 q2 amount of heat from which it gets q2 amount of heat and expand right this process is shown by the curve a b in indicator diagram indicator diagram or pv diagram the pv diagram pressure volume diagram is itself called the indicator diagram so in this process this condition happens as we know that this is isothermal process so change in internal energy will be zero so according to first law of thermodynamics q2 will be equal to w1 right now since w1 is equal to in isothermal reversible expansion the work done is given by the formula r t2 because the temperature is t2 over there ln final volume v2 by initial volume p1 this is equation number okay let's write it therefore q2 will be equal to w1 will be equal to r t2 ln v2 by v1 both the work done and heat energy will be same whose value would be this much n was supposed to be supposed to be over here but we are considering one mole of n that's why the value of n would be one here this r is universal gas constant let us consider it to be equation number one and similarly what we can do from in pv diagram pv diagram if we see graphically w1 can be represented by the area area of a b b prime a prime a b b prime a prime so this is the first operation now let's see the second operation that is the adiabatic reversible expansion the second step is adiabatic reversible expansion for this process the system was taken away from the source and it was kept in thermally insulated enclosure for this process the system was taken away from the source and kept in a thermally insulated enclosure so that the exchange in heat will be zero on the indicator diagram this process is denoted by the graph bc as it is more steeper than isothermal process this is adiabatic expansion and look at here the condition will change like this in this process the pressure changes this will be p3 volume will change v3 temperature will also change and the temperature will drop now you might be wondering why does the temperature drop in this process as this is adiabatic process so it can't exchange the heat energy between the system and surrounding for the expansion it needs heat energy so where will it get it from it will definitely use its own internal energy and because of that the temperature falls to t1 now in this process q will be zero and w2 can be given by the formula cv initial temperature minus final temperature initial temperature is t2 minus final temperature is t1 this is equation number two let me write the formula in case of adiabatic expansion work done is given by n cv initial temperature minus final temperature so in this case initial temperature is t2 and final temperature is t1 so we got this much to be the work done on the pv diagram on the pv diagram w2 is represented by the area of 
B C C prime B prime, right? And this process is denoted by the graph B C. Now let's see the third process or third operation. The third operation is isothermal reversible compression. Now we will compress the gas isothermally. For that, the system is removed from the thermally insulated enclosure and it is kept in contact with the sink. The system, system is now kept in contact with the sink. Why? Because in compression, the gas will produce heat energy. That heat energy has to be absorbed by something else. Otherwise, the temperature of the system would increase. But as we are considering isothermal process, the temperature should not change. For that, it must be, uh, it must be kept in contact with a sink, which would absorb all the heat energy produced by it, so that the temperature would not change. And this process is denoted by the graph, uh, denoted by the curve C D on this indicator diagram the pressure changes to P4 volume changes to V4 but the temperature will remain T1 itself this is the this is the third operation look at here let me write little bit in this case in this case the system will produce heat the system will produce heat that is q1 now we are considering the heat to be q1 hence it is negative that is q1 is expressed in minus term okay there is minus sign in front of q1 also the work is being done on the system to compress the gas we have to do the work on the system so work is also negative this is w3 so minus q2 will be equal to minus w3 sorry q1 should be over here will be equal to the formula we already know R T1 ln final volume V4 by initial volume V3. This is equation number 3. On PV diagram, on PV diagram, this work done that is W3 can be represented by the area of C D D prime C prime. I'm sorry to not to write it. I forgot this is C prime. And here, if you produce D here, this should be D prime. Okay. So this is the third step. This is isothermal reversible compression. Now let's see the fourth and final step that is adiabatic reversible compression, and that will help us to prove our required condition. Now, the gas is compressed adiabatically. For this, the system is now taken away from the sink and it is again kept in thermally in insulated enclosure. The system is again kept in thermally insulated enclosure. For that, so that Q will be equal to 0. And this is represented by the curve. This process is represented by curve DA. Let me draw the curve DA over here. So this is that curve. This is, this is isothermal compression isothermal compression and this da is adiabatic conversion adia 
adiabatic compression so da represents the adiabatic iso adiabatic reversible compression here work is being done on the system as it is compression so w4 will be negative right so w4 can be given by the formula same the minus w4 will be given by the formula cv initial temperature t1 final temperature t2 t1 minus t2 it can be written as minus cv t2 minus t1 and on pv diagram pv diagram it can be represented minus w4 can be represented by the area uh, d a a prime d prime d a a prime d prime so this area will represent the adiabatic reversible compression now we got four different formulas right now we will try to prove q is equal to w how it happens so these are the four equations that we get from the four different steps now let's prove how q will be equal to w so we know that total heat or net heat of the system is the sum of two heat right so there is q2 minus q1 because the sign is minus over here let's put the values over here so q2 means r t2 ln b2 by b1 minus q1 means plus r t1 ln v4 by v3 let's consider it to be question number e we are considering a b c d as the equation now okay and similarly total work that is w is given by w1 plus w2 in expansion the system does the work minus w3 minus w4 right in compression the work is done on the system so let's put the values over here if you put the value w1 and w2 will be added right similarly these two will be subtracted so if we directly write these two will be cancelled out and we can simply add these two values so it will be rt2 ln v2 by v1 right uh, plus rt1 ln v4 by v3 this is equation number f so from equation e and f from equation e and equation f what do we see q is equal to w so this was the required condition that is whatever heat energy we supply to the system all the heat energy should convert into the work and uh, carnot cycle actually proves that the carnot cycle verifies the cyclic process condition so this theory is verified and this theory was true now let's derive the general form of this equation now we know that the graph pv graph we obtained was like this right something like this a b c d the volume was v1 temperature t2 volume changed but temperature do not change volume 3 temperature dropped volume 4 temperature same right this was the condition and bc and da were adiabatic core so for curve for curve bc as bc is adiabatic curve so the formula for adiabatic condition will be satisfied satisfied over there that is t2 v2 gamma minus 1 t2 v2 gamma minus 1 is equal to t1 v3 gamma minus 1 right let's find the value of t2 by t1 it will be t2 by t1 will be equal to v3 by v2 to the power gamma minus 1 let's consider it to be equation number f g also for corb for corb uh, da we can use the same condition same rule over here t1 v4 gamma minus 1 t1 v4 gamma minus 1 will be equal to t2 v1 gamma minus 1 t2 v1 gamma minus 1 if we put the is sorry if we find the value of t2 by t1 we will get uh, t2 by t1 will be equal to v4 by v1 to the power gamma minus 1 equation number h if we compare equation number g and h then what do we see left hand side are equal then right hand side will also be equal since this power is also same then base will also be same therefore v3 by 
v2 is equal to v4 by v1 here in this equation e and f we have v4 by v3 term so let's find the value of v4 by v3 we will take this v3 to this side and v1 to this side then what do we get therefore v4 by v3 can be written as v1 by v2 right so in place of v4 by v3 we can write v1 by v2 let me erase this portion now we are going to replace the v4 by v3 from there from here by using that equation using v4 by v3 is equal to v1 by v2 in uh, in q is equal to w form so both of them have same value so q will be equal to w will be equal to what is the equation r t2 ln v2 by v1 plus r t1 ln this would be v1 by v2 right it can be written as r t2 ln v2 by v1 minus r t1 ln v2 by v1 because if we find the reciprocal over here then the sign in, in front of it changes right so it will be r r and this value are common but t2 and t1 are not common so we can write this in this form right let's consider this to be equation number efgh and this is the required expression for w and q the reason why we derive this formula is by using this formula we can understand efficiency properly i have been using this term efficiency from the beginning of the video what is the meaning of this efficiency let's understand that efficiency is the fraction of heat converted into work that is how much heat has been converted into work represented in percentage gives us the value of efficiency this is defined as efficiency is defined as the ratio of work to the heat supplied whatever heat we supply and whatever work the ratio of that is called efficiency it is denoted by this symbol this is called eta okay so efficiency is given by the formula efficiency eta is actually work by heat right what was the heat energy supplied q2 and what is the meaning of this work we know that w is equal to q in case of carnot cycle or cyclic process so w is equal to q in q means q2 minus q1 right so in place of q w we can write q2 minus q1 it will be like this and if we solve it we will get 1 minus q1 by q2 this is the formula of efficiency that we use to find the value of efficiency properly here this formula depends on the heat okay heat energy that is q1 and q2 there is one more formula that is frequently used in uh, to calculate efficiency that is uh, again since eta is equal to w by q2 okay w by q2 means look at here what is the meaning of w w means r t2 minus t1 ln v2 by v1 this was the formula of w work done and what is the value of q2 q2 means the heat energy supplied by the uh, supplied by the source to the system that was given by the formula r t2 ln v2 by v1 right let's cancel r r cancel these two values are cancel so it is t2 minus t1 by t2 is equal to 1 minus t1 by t2 this is another formula to calculate the value of efficiency or you can simply write eta is equal to 1 minus q1 by q2 and that is also equal to 1 minus t1 by t2 so from here you can establish the relation between q1 q2 t1 t2 as well this is the meaning of efficiency if the value of efficiency is more that is better for us because the uh, the machine is converted more heat into work 
okay this depends on temperature as well now let's see different cases related to efficiency in terms of temperature the formula of efficiency in terms of temperature is t2 minus t1 by t2 right it depends on the initial temperature and final temperature you can simply say t1 and t2 so the first condition is what if the gap between the temperatures that is t1 and t2 increases that is this gapping that is t2 is getting bigger and bigger and t1 is getting smaller and smaller then what will happen in this case the efficiency will increase efficiency will increase the another condition is what if t1 is equal to 0 that means the lower temperature is 0 or 0 simply you can say this is absolute 0 absolute 0 case so if the system is working between absolute 0 case and higher temperature then the efficiency will be 100 percent just imagine if we can uh, work between absolute zero of temperature and any higher temperature then the efficiency of that engine would be 100 percent this is second case and the third case is what if the temperature t1 and t2 are equal that is the engine is working at the same temperature then in this particular case eta will be equal to zero that means there won't be any efficiency and the machine will not work so in this video we understood about cyclic process carnot cycle we proved q is equal to w we understood about efficiency and we saw the three cases of efficiency as well i hope you understood everything about this video if you like the video please share this video as much as you can and thank you for watching the video